Welcome to Best Threesome Ever, a podcast discussing all things revolving around nerdy pop culture. Probably not what you were expecting, but it's just as fun. Now here are your hosts, Nick, Rob, and Kevin. That's like the lamest Han Solo blaster ever. Saying. But at the same time, if you if you paint it, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. but it's like the, the scope is like way too close and is yeah. I mean Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Curly fry. Uh, yes, that'll make me feel better. I knew it would. Alright, here we go. Best threesome ever, episode one hundred and fifty, brought to you by Heroic Goods and Games and Jaybird Wines. I'm Nick. And I'm Rob. I'm Kevin, and this is our what? Our sequicentennial. Nice. Yes, it is. <laughs> hundred and sequicentennial. Good word. Big word. Thank you. Thank you. Off the top of your head, or did you think about that, right? I didn't. I, it, I think. You think I know what number these shows are in advance? I do not. <laughs> uh, but it's a it's a word I learned back in probably two thousand and two or so. Uh, Homestar Runner, when Strong Bad had his 150th oh. email, he called it his sequicentenny mail. Right. <laughs> there was Awful. a <clears throat> there's a line in Avenue Q that's supposed to be something about getting a case of something. And the actor, for whatever reason, like it was not intentional at all, was said like, I need to get a buttload of this. And the actresses who responded... Said, I'll get you a bunghole, or no, what was it? What's the, uh, whatever, uh, like a lot of cases is, there's an actual word for it. It's like a weird word. And she happened to know like a hundred cases, for whatever ter- technical term that is. Okay. And it was very funny because right, without even thinking, just boom, right on the spot. I like bunghole. 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 It's a hole in the, where you tap bunghole. the cork from the cases of whatever you're drinking. Uh, yeah, 150 episodes, huh? I think I, I have I had a what if, but I don't remember. But I had another one as a backup where I was like, oh, this is good. But then I thought of another. But, anyways, uh, so here it is Who is scarier without morals, Deadpool or Superman? Superman. Superman. Deadpool Superman. barely already has morals, yeah. and Superman without morals can murder the earth. They've established this. That's <laughs> a very easy one. Yeah. yeah, that's why that one was done. I'm like, ask fucking Superman, duh. But the other one, I don't remember what it was. I'm sorry. Guys, I'm sorry. Fair enough. To say they are loose is already generous when it comes to Deadpool. <laughs> I found out something that made me very angry. What's well, that? Uh-oh. Uh, Omega, Omega Red was supposed to be in Deadpool 2. Yes. Um, and I've, I've, I've watched the deleted scene and see where he's in the background. I'm, I'm very upset because you... Omega Red, I, I had no idea. Really? Omega Red is like what, probably one of my f- absolute favorite X-Men villains. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. He's not like that cool. Yeah. I just think I just I've always thought he was super neat. I've like the the whips thing. I've I've liked that he's always been I always thought he was a cooler nemesis for Wolverine than Sabretooth. Sure. Right. Sabretooth is boring. Hot take. Onslaught is better than Omega Red. I I'm and he I is <laughs> horseshit. I'm not gonna lie, I thought they kind of uh we're going to do that in Iron Man 2 with, uh, what's his name's character? He's Russian. With, He's got little flash, yeah. creepy little things. Oh, I'm like, yeah. how could you, why would you? Ugh, okay. Very similar. And, and uh, we were even, um, we were teased uh, with him with um, X-Men 3. Mm-hmm. With the, the guy who was basically a, a boring dude version of Mero. Yeah. Because um, oh, yeah. all you saw was like a split second of uh, like these tendrils coming out of his wrists. And you're like. Oh shit! And then it just turned out to be that boring ass. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, speaking of uh, saber tooth, I found out. All right, well, maybe I just I didn't find out. I put or found recently that, or put two and two together. That's what I'm trying to fucking say. That uh, Liv Schreiber is Pablo Schreiber's brother. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Well, saber tooth and cool. Master Chief are brothers. It's cool. Um, speaking of which, uh, you can stay after this episode uh, for our couples massage of Moon Knight, Picard, and Halo. I think. Yeah. We mm. Couples trio, couple massage or trio massage, best threesome massage. I don't know. <laughs> There's three. Normally, we talk about two things. How about a menage a three? A menage a three. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Cut welcome. print. Fix it in post. I Ian, fix you. it in post. I hate it. <laughs> um, I also wanted to note that. Uh, the la- when we were talking last time about rogue games, or roguelike games, uh, our our friend uh, Tech God Stefan posted. Tech on our- God Stefan, sorry, 
That's right. That was loud. Uh, he posted on our website for more information. Uh, was roguelikes are also called or are, are so called because they borrow designed choices from the 1980 PC dungeon crawler Rogue, which famously has uh, procedurally generated levels and character permadeath. That is correct. Yep. Games like Hades, Rogue Le- Legacy, and Dead Cells are often classified in spinoff genre games called roguelites. Yep. Due to the inclusion of incremental permanent upgrades for the player. Mm-hmm. And it subsequently runs easier. And he said, wrote, ended with, mm, okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Uh, the little tease in there, even. All right. Uh, uh, all right. All right, Stefan. All right. All right, buddy. Uh, and then he posted a wick, uh, link to Wikipedia for Rogue, the game Rogue. Um, yeah. And, and I have had a chance to play it a couple of times. And it's... It's a game. It's an older game, so it suffers from, like... Mm-mm. Older game attitude. Older game attitude, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although uh, an older game I have been playing recently that I am just delighted by, uh, I, I decided I'm finally going to actually beat Sonic 2. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's fun. Uh, Tough. The, the, the Dr. Robotnik boss, the, the machine one at the end, is quite the pain in the ass. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, I believe that uh, a giant version of it is going to be in uh, Sonic 2. Yeah. With, with the film. Which, well, uh, and that's kind of why I've been playing through it. It's just, uh, you know, like another video game podcast I listen to, Get Played, um, they're going through and doing uh, uh, Sonic 2 next week. And... Uh, uh, I decided to go back and play, it, and uh, it's nice because it's on the Nintendo online library, so that's really helpful. Nice. Uh, and sad, sad news, just the other day, uh, Gilbert Godfrey passed away at 67. He did. I did not read the cause, though. Or couldn't. Uh, I don't believe, it said a long illness. Yeah, he's, mm. he's had something for a while. Yeah. What was your first encounter with Gilbert Godfrey that you guys can remember? Aladdin. I thought mine was Aladdin, and then I remembered he's in Cadillac, man. Aladdin. <laughs> Aladdin, yeah. <laughs> and then USA Up All Night. It was either him or Ronda Shear. And so. Sure. Yeah. I was actually uh, just watching the, the Angry Video Game Nerd episode with Gilbert Gottfried in it. Are you? Yeah. Mm. He had a lot of guest stars that season, because he yeah. had just come off of having Macaulay Culkin and playing all the Home Alone games with him. <laughs> Oh, and then no. he had Gilbert Gottfried as a fake video game designer named Fred Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And there were uh, some mobile game that, that went out of the PlayStation 4 uh, on the PlayStation market that mm-hmm. was just absolute trash. Uh, he was basically playing the quote-unquote programmer of the game. Yeah. Was, mm-hmm. He was disgusting as always, of course. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, th- this means we now no longer have an eminent source of the best aristocrats joke. It's a true story. It was either Saget or, or Gottfried. And I still think the, Saget takes the cake on that one. I think Gottfried's, uh, I think Gilbert Gottfried's uh, aristocrats joke is successful in shockier humor. Yeah. Um, it's definitely more gross. It's definitely like it's it's uh, fucking foul. It's horrific. The things that are done to the dog in his version of the aristocrats are just those are crimes. Yeah, those are those are those are crimes that I think Gilbert Godfrey probably could have been prosecuted for. I think maybe he was, was in a lot of stuff. He was. He was. I think it's just Bob Saget's setup is just so. I don't know. Better. I don't know. Anyways, I so I take it back. It would have been problem child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> problem child. Uh, yeah, that was a. <sighs> that sure was a film. Was was a problem child or problem child two where they were on the thing at the carnival and everybody started puking. The first one. Okay. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> Classic. I puke. can see it in my yeah, head right now. The horrible bad uh, special effects that they used for it. Yeah. But someone shared a photo uh, that Gilbert Gottfried had posted on his Instagram. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, did you see this? Yes, uh, someone, someone else, some other person online had posted it, and it was a, it was a screen grab of, of his Instagram that said, this picture is very sad to me now. 
and it's Gilbert Gottfried, Louis Anderson, and Bob Saget. Did you post this? That was me. Oh, okay. Well, I <laughs> somebody posted this. So, so because I remember that there was like because the photo is embedded, so it has someone out. Like there's some other Twitter. It was it, it, it was his Twitter, and he had posted it. Okay. So you posted, okay. I posted a I th- screen grab of his Twitter where he had posted that. Okay. I thought someone, I thought it was someone else in this, I, I thought it was someone else. So I'm sorry. Uh, Kevin yeah. posted. Kevin posted. <laughs> yes, Kevin posted a, the, the screen grab of uh, Gilbert Godfrey's Instagram where he said, this is very sad to me now. And and I was just like, oh, now it's very, very sad. Like, yeah. come on, man. Yeah, I, think I, I think my comment was, I bet you they're having one hell of a reunion up in heaven. Do you think they're telling the fucking aristocrats joke up there? I hope so. And I bet Louis Anderson's is worse than both of theirs. I don't know. I'm going to be that guy. No, they're not because it doesn't exist. Well, there's that too. Okay. It's mainly that. They're um, meeting in the afterlife. <laughs> I don't no. know. They're 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 both in the bl- and all three of them are in the bad place. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah, maybe, wherever wherever they're meeting, they're having a party. Some kind of party. Uh, God, yeah. Oh my God, I just I I just had the wor- the worst slash best thought in the world. Oh, it's just okay. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in the hotel room, three drinks in, with the three of them talking at each oh, other. I'm sure. Oh, I can only imagine. <laughs> oh, the, the aural irrit- irritation that I would have. <laughs> between, uh, at least between Louis, Louis Anderson and, and Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah, but also like... Bob Saget had a, had a tone that he, he could sometimes get into. Like if he did his caricatures of like, like, like he his do- America's Funniest Home Video voice? Yeah. yeah. The, the voice he always put on everything? Yeah. That sounded kind of like Marge Simpson? Yeah, 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 yeah. If he's just doing his America's Funniest Home Video's voice, and then Louie and Gilbert are just talking. <laughs> but it has to be Gilbert's, like, Gilbert voice, not his actual voice. Yes, it has voice. to be Gilbert's stage voice. Yeah. Which, I mean, his, um, his regular voice is similar not, in tone, but not as he, nails he on the chalkboard. He definitely turns the dial up. Yes, yeah. he does. It was... It was um, Bobcat Goldthwait, who I have no idea, <laughs> oh, yeah. was just normal. Yeah. <laughs> no idea. There was a great episode. Uh, there was a, I forget what series it was, but it was, da- um, was it David Tell and another comedian. Who was that guy that did all, uh, he did all the MTV, the roast things, and he was always the host. Oh, um, uh, yes, yes, yes. Greg. Uh, Ross. Oh, uh, Jeffrey Ross. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Ross. Ross. There it is. Okay. So they there was a series, a comedy series, where they would do like these late night comedy shows at this small little place, um, and it was really just them kind of like ripping on each other. But then like there were like uh, like Gilbert Godfrey was there, and like Tom Cruise was in the audience, Bob Saget was in the audience. Like mm. there's all these people, and they, of course they fucking pick on him, and they called Gilbert up there to tell some jokes, and it was it was pretty funny. I forget the name of the series, but if you have a chance to watch it, it's kind of entertaining, or at least have it on in the background. It's kind of fun to listen to, even if you don't like this, the two uh, order, order, or um, hosts of it, I guess, you know, they would be called. Someone on TikTok posted a Gilbert Gottfried joke as a tribute, and I was like, really? That's the one you picked? He didn't go with his, like, reading of Fifty Shades of Grey, because that was amazing. <laughs> my, no, they went... It's one of my favorite things. Uh, yeah, yeah. That and, that and George Takei. Although, like, George Takei makes me feel uncomfortable in the pants. <laughs> and not in a good way. Like, <laughs> like, I could listen to that man read a phone book and be like, yes, yes, George, beat me up, Sulu. Thank you. Yes, yeah, wonderful. Uh, but, like, listening to him read Fifty Shades of Grey felt so weird. <laughs> <laughs> but Gilbert Godfrey, like, awesome. It's hilarious. But, anyways, this person posted a. Uh, one of his, one of the jokes that he told, and he, he, it was a joke about um, there's a mom and a dad and two kids sitting at the breakfast table, and the mom asks the one kid, uh, "What would you like for breakfast?" And the kid goes, "Some fucking French toast." And uh, the mom then proceeds to start beating the ever loving shit out of the kid, and then the dad takes off his belt, belt and starts whipping the shit out of the kid. And then, great story. So oh far. yeah, no, it's fucking awful. Like I, I it's just, a Gilbert Godfrey joke, of course. Yes, yeah. but I want to point out, like this is the joke someone chose to tribute to him, and I'm like, mm, really? I don't know about this. Like, he definitely did better yeah, 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 stuff keep going. than this. Anyways, um, so yeah, it, it, whipping the shit out of the kid with his belt, and finally the kid runs off crying to his room. 
And uh, the mom just looks at the other little boy and goes, well, what would you like for breakfast? And the little boy goes, well, I sure don't want fucking French toast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, that, that's the joke. And, like, I don't know. It's just, it's the setup that doesn't work for me. And so yeah. I'm just like, that's not, I don't, I would not consider that a solid Gilbert Godfrey joke to post right. to the internet. Right. But, yeah, yeah. Aside from the, you know, child abuse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you can't laugh at it, I don't know what's going on with You're, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, I, I think you saw the... I, I think he saw the street sign of danger, <laughs> cliff. <laughs> He's like, oh, nope, did better I? back out of this. <laughs> did I? Uh, uh, another follow-up news. Uh, apparently, the Academy has banned Will Smith from the Academy Awards for 10 years. Cool. But only from attending. He can still go to the Correct. after parties. Yep. He can still be nominated yep. for stuff, and he can still win awards. Right. So, so they did nothing. So, yeah. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right. He just doesn't have to show up. Wait, right. you mean I could still win an Oscar and I don't have to attend, attend your elitist white fest? Cool. Correct. Like, I'm okay with it. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. If it's a he, very extreme example, he, and I'm sorry, Kevin. He also withdrew. He personally withdrew from uh, the academy. He as did. Well. Yes. So he personally chose to do that. That was his thing. So yeah, you know, I, I think there's going to be aftermath from this from here on out. But right. But I don't know. Yeah, mm. it's run its course in my opinion. What else is going on out there, guys? This is a slow news week for us. I, sure. I, I mean, there's trailers. There's a lot of there's trailers. trailers. There's, there's trailers, but I mean, news. Our nerd news is usually first, and sure, it's um, one of those times where we have more trailers and we have nerd news. Do we want to talk about this now or in the Menage Three, uh, the uh, season three announcement of Picard? I think I think this falls into news. Yeah. 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 Okay. They have a season three. <laughs> Everyone's coming back. Everyone, yes. Everyone who was a, a mainstay on the show. So not people who came and went. Yep. Look at you, Will Wheaton. Oh, but I would have from, loved to see him come back. I would have too, and I hear he was specifically not invited back. From from what I hear, that could just be the rumor mm, mill. Yeah. Um, which would be kind of depressing, seeing as how yeah. he does the... The the after trek does, thing. yeah he does, ready he's, room is, he's become yeah. such a trek ambassador at this point too and it's just like mm, I don't know I I would disagree with that and I'm sorry buddy who are you apologizing to you oh why because because my because um, uh my joke was insensitive and I apologize what joke the joke I posted on your your uh, Facebook page when you posted the news. Oh, yeah, I am sorry about that. It was insensitive. Yeah, I, I have, I it. have, I I believe over the years crafted a, a very specific legacy of of making sure that my my sources are correct before I post, uh, especially trailers because mm-hmm. fan trailers and and fake trailers and that kind of a thing are are such an irritant to me. Yeah. like a, a I get like. I get tense and anger. I'm like, I don't, why do you do this just for your own clout? All it does is make me mad at you and want to report you to the FBI. <laughs> I don't know what for. Wow. I'll figure something out. <laughs> wow. uh, but I, I hate them. So whenever I post something, I'm, I'm going to post legit shit. It, it's generally credible. Like, and, yeah. and that's, and that's fair. And he, he from where I'm coming from, I trust nothing. <laughs> I only, and that was where I was coming from, and I'm sorry about that. That was insensitive. Of course, I know you. You have always posted credible things on the internet. I only would post them if I think they're like well done or like something that's like, oh, that's kind of cool, you know. But rarely have I ever posted a fan trailer. The one that I did was like the one that they did f- the fan trailer made for Obi Wan because it was kind of it was kind of cool, like the way they cut everything together, and it was a nice cut of. Uh, other movies that Ewan McGregor has been in. I feel like a friend of the show Z has posted more than a few, and I always, I'm always like, "Bro, come on!" <laughs> Dude. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, I guess trailers then, huh? Um, well, I just want to oh, talk just a little bit more because, yes, the entirety of the, the entire cast is coming back, which means, presumably, of course, Michael Dorn will get. Dressed up in the in the wharf makeup again, 
I assume that's what's happening. And and, gonna- c- and that's what I'm waiting to find out too is how they're gonna how they're gonna wharf him out because Discovery has yeah. they've all- done so many different versions of, of Klingon since then. But I feel like because Worf's look is his look is iconic mm-hmm. with his little anti Hitler mustache and yeah. his very specific spine of clitoris things he's got going on <laughs> on his forehead. <laughs> yep. Um, I, I think they'll keep, try and keep him as as I hope as so. Worfy as possible. I would hope so. I hope so. But we know that Brent Spiner's coming back too, and we know he won't be Data. He has said. Th- Consistently, that he will never play Data again. I feel like he will just be uh, another soon. soon. Well, yeah. I mean, because they already have uh, Nunian Soon Jr. Is that his name? Yeah, anyway, Alton. His, his Alton. Alton Soon. They already have him established in the show, so I'm sure, sure he'll just be him. I don't think he's going to do the B4 thing because um, fuck that thing. I also really hope it's not or lore. lore. Well, either way, he wouldn't. But I, I think, but I don't think he's going to android out. I think he's, yeah, I think yeah. he's keeping it human because that's where he's comfortable. Because I think there was a little bit of backlash to how he looked as Data, and yeah. he just doesn't want to put himself and right. his no, self esteem through that. Right. Well, and I, I think no there, offense to Brent Spiner, but like that makeup did not age. Him. It doesn't age him well. No, like he looks not great in it now right and i don't think i think part of it too was i think that the whatever makeup they used on him he just it didn't react well with him i don't remember if that was part of it too but i don't know i don't know i know the contacts bothered him i know that oh yeah that i knew uh, i feel like they could go not even the deep fake route but they could just go digital. i think i i think they go full digital and it would be okay because mm-hmm. um, paramount's been throwing a lot of money at star trek so yeah yeah. Um, if they did want to do lore or B4. That was, <laughs> I posted that question on my Facebook, too. If Data if data can't use contractions, so Data could not use contractions, but he can, why couldn't he put two togethers like you and R together for your? Because that's a contraction. It's, a, it's two letters put together. It's not a contraction. It's a, an abbreviated. Oh, like literally U and R. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, put U and R together. Because I in my head, I, <laughs> the letters U and you. R. The yeah. letters U and the letter R, put them together as your. And then somebody pointed out, well, because I think, who was it you? I pointed out that because. Let's say it was. Writing, Let's say it was writing in the 1990s wasn't, <laughs> wasn't shortening words like that. I don't think it was. No. Just take care, credit for it anyways. Fuck it. I could look. I don't want to. Somebody wrote it. Anyways. Ignore the like ten minutes. And, we and because you don't. Maybe it was my cousin. Maybe it was my cousin Mike. No, it was Kevin. We because decided. You can't really. <laughs> you can't really talk like that. Yeah. Um. I think the only time he could use a like a contraction. Uh, I think the only time he did it is if it was uh, like a pronoun. Okay. Um. Like that's the only time he he would do like a compound word contraction things like that is if it was actually part of like a name because hmm. he did it before. Did he? Oh yeah, he did. Okay, I'm gonna out myself here. I'm 34 years old. I've been a Star Trek fan since I was very young, five, six, something like fuck that. Fuck you, old. Uh, fuck you. Um, I want that known and I want you to understand I'm a voracious lover of of all things Trek especially TNG like that was the one that I grew up on and I drank that show up I love it until two minutes ago I never noticed that data is the factual word for information Whereas lore is the colloquial concept of, of storytelling, of storytelling and, and like an information like that. They're two sides of the same coin. One is based in <laughs> fact, the other in opinion. And I'm so upset. It took me until literally two minutes ago to realize the wordplay at hand, and I'm so like always p- trust data, not lore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God damn it! Jesus Christ, oh. that is phenomenal. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't pick up on that. I didn't. I'm sorry. I, is, I'm so. I'm a bad, is, bad Trek fan. I'm so sorry, God everyone. I can't believe I just did that. Oh, That's fucking hilarious. So funny. God. Well, speaking of Star Trek, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lower Decks' season three trailer came out. 
Sure did. Not much of a trailer, but a bunch of words. <laughs> Mostly just a bunch of words, yeah. But they're um the cast was at the the Star Trek Chicago convention. Yeah. Yes, I did see this. Dressed as their characters, mm-hmm. with the exception of Pillboy, who I think was busy filming something else because right. he's a very busy gentleman. Which was, but even phenomenal. Uh, Jack Quaid was wearing like a purple wig. Yeah, and, like yeah. during the panel, like did the butthole thing, and <laughs> <laughs> which I'm surprised he's not doing. You know, press shit for the boys. Right. The fact that he he was able to fit this new schedule. What a right. fucking guy. Right. So yeah, but it really shows you like how much everyone looks like their character, right? Well, also the the love that they have for the for the material too. For sure. Like they showed up at a they showed up at a convention for an animated show and dressed up as their characters. Like I don't think even fucking Fu- Futurama is the one I can think of that would come closest to that, and I don't think any of them ever have tried to dress up as their characters. I don't think any. Yeah, I don't know. The only person that I I could well the only person I can think of uh, was Tom Hiddleston. He did he dressed as Loki once. Yep, but that was to that was a whole. Mar- it was to introduce a Marvel thing. Yeah, it was yeah. all marketing and, yep. and yeah, yeah, yeah. whatnot. And I'm sure this was a bunch of this was marketing too. But like, still, right? It's uh, pretty good though. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah, not much to the the trailer though. Just them sounds like uh, the captain, uh, uh, the Cerritos has been. Uh, put on trial for exploding stuff up and exploding stuff up, making stuff go boom. Yeah. Uh, so I love yeah. that both uh, Jerry O'Connell and Rebecca Romaine are are now both currently actively in Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, hmm. like at this point, what a hundred years apart yeah. in canon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the okay. Not not in actual age, just... No, in, in canon, because now she's number one, yep. and uh, he, he's you know off on the lower decks, which takes place an amount of time after Nemesis. Uh, I, I, did that, I thought they established that in the first episode. No, maybe not. They, they, they established it. I just don't remember. It's between Nemesis and Romulus exploding. Right. So, so it, it's, it's, like, it's before Picard... Because Riker's still it's like five to ten years, I think, younger and uh, on active duty, and still in doing the Riker thing. Mm-hmm. Oh it. shit! I I didn't realize that uh, Rebecca Romaine was in fact still married to Jerry O'Connell. I thought, yeah, <laughs> no, because she she was married to Stamos, yeah, John Stamos, that. and then they split up, and she got together with Jerry O'Connell, and they've been yeah together ever since. Yeah, good for him. Have. And good for him, Good yeah. job, fat kid from the Wesley Crusher movie. Stand by me? That's the one. Yeah. Stand by me. I mean, I knew it was called. I just want to be funny about it. Yeah, no, that's another Star Trek connection. Yeah, there you go. Let's, there you go. I'm sorry. Uh, and, a Cor- and a Corey Feldman connection. He was never in Star Trek, though. And River of Phoenix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> should put Joaquin Phoenix in a Star Trek. Oh, God. I don't know if I love it or hate it. <laughs> he would make a good villain. He'd make a lovely Star Trek villain, I think. He would have been a better con. No, you know who would have been made a, a better con? Somebody Indian. Well, yes, that too. In I don't fact, know. more specifically that, yes. I, 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 to this day, I don't know why. They, like, yes, Benedict Cumberbatch is an incredible actor, but that was the choice that they made. Mm-hmm. The kid that was in that horrible air, live-action airbender movie that played the son of the firebender lord. Dev Patel. The son of? That was Dev Patel? Yeah. Oh, yeah, him. Love that guy. He play, yeah, he, he plays, plays, I want, I want he plays to Zuko time. in the movie. And he's the gr- Green Knight in the Green Knight. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. oh god, he's yeah. such a good actor. Dev, but I loved it. He could he could have been he could have been con. He could have been an excellent con. Um or <laughs> the guy from the Harold and Kumar movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> but also that would have been funny. I, I would have loved because Cal Penn. That would have been amazing. Be... <laughs> Just because him and, and John yes, Cho yes. Yes. together in a star yes. movie. That yes! <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that guy. No, I, I got to bring him up now. It's going to bug the shit. But, uh, but also, yourself. like, there's uh, that's the thing. Like, there's such a a glut of good Indian actors out there. The the master, the most recent master on Doctor Who. Um, uh, his name is escaping me, but the most recent actor on Doctor Who, the most recent actor to play the master on Doctor Who. Uh, I'm unfamiliar because I have not gotten to that point in the show. Last I checked, that's it was fair. still Missy. Oh yeah, no, it is not. I'm sorry. 
I'm just going to apologize to you all show <laughs> for whatever. I don't know. Anyways, it's an Indian actor and he's delightful. Uh, I should say he's an East Asian actor. I cannot confirm that he's Indian. Hmm. There you go. Because I don't know enough about him. Hmm. I can't help you out there. I don't even know. I don't watch actors. <sighs> so I don't know what you're talking about. He would have been a really good con too, though. Like, uh, even, even fucking Noel Clark, who was in that movie for five minutes in the beginning and he blows up Starfleet. Like, mm-hmm. he would have been a better con. But I like Noel Clark for many reasons. Well, the there. guy from iZombie, uh, he was also Midnight Mass. Yes. Ra- it's Ra- Rahul something. Yes. Uh, Ra- Rahul Singh? That can't no, be it right. starts with a K. But anyway, him, uh, he's because he's British, he has a great voice. So Rahul Kohli. That's the one. Yep, there it is. So he could have, I think he would have done the cadences very well. Um, and I just, I fucking like that dude as an actor. Yeah. I haven't watched iZombie. It's so good. Another show I got you put on my it's list. It's fucking so good. <laughs> uh, Rose MacGyver uh, has just absolutely fucking incredible range. Yes. Uh, which she has proven not only in iZombie, but in her new show, Ghosts. Mm. Um, I've heard good things about this. I, I cannot recommend this show enough. It is so funny. Yes, a lot of people say, oh, it's not as good as the British version. But this is actually one of those shows that I think is as good as the British version. Really? It's it's very charming. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of that is helped by Rose McIver and uh, the guy who was in um, uh, Pitch Perfect. I believe he's also Indian. Um, mm. But anyway... Um, he um from the, the trailers I get a real pushing daisies vibe from the show. It's so it's uh, it's about a girl who gets um uh she falls down the stairs she almost dies um and after almost dying she's able to see all the ghosts that inhabit her haunted her, house her house that she has inherited mm. um and that she's trying to turn into a bed and breakfast and the ghosts don't like that but it's very much a you know a, a sitcom kind of a show nice um, but, a sitcom with ghosts um, awesome. And it's it's phenomenal. The um, oh, he was in Parks and Rec. Okay, he came in towards the end after like the city merger between the two towns. Okay, the I think it was him. The incredibly gay one. Um, cool. Uh, I've never seen Parks and Rec. Who uh, he plays like this old colonial um, okay. general. Um, awesome. Who hates Alexander Hamilton and is very <laughs> yeah, upset yeah. that there's a musical about him and not one about him. him? Yeah, it's it's so good. Um, yeah, it's it it's super funny because like all, there's all these different kinds of ghosts. Like there's a there's a Viking named Thor um, <laughs> who who is has taken to like the the new age a lot better than some of the other ones. And yeah, it's it's super funny. And so she. Uh, is always kind of the interpreter between the ghosts and her husband, who can't see them, obviously. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, yeah, it's it's a very clever show, and I just keep reminding myself that she, well, she got started in Lovely Bones as the little sister, but in my mind, her her claim to her her big break was Power Rangers, <laughs> where she was a Yellow Ranger for a very long time, and then she did Once Upon a Time. She was Tinkerbell, uh, um, but I sure. I am a big fan of her as as, as an actress and. Uh, I find the show very charming. Yeah, and it's a show with more than 10 episodes in a season. You gotta Yay. love it. It's, it's still on network airing. television, isn't it? Yes, but it's also <laughs> on Paramount Plus. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. So if you're yep. done, if you've caught up on Star Trek, you can slap on over to that bad boy. All right. All right. Trailers? Uh, yeah. Stranger Things 3. Four. Four. Stranger Things 4. I don't remember if I've seen... Well, I was in Season three, season you know, so four. Yeah, oh, was the one with, that was the one with the Power Ranger. Yeah. yeah, I I don't remember if I watched season three. It was the one with the Power Ranger. It was the though. one in the mall. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Okay, yeah, that's season three. That's season three. All right, and I did watch season three. Mm-hmm. I don't remember, man. Fucking the, COVID. The fun redhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. You saw season three then. All right, so they they four. sure got old. Holy shit! Yeah, I mean they are be... they are adults now. <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one of them. Uh, and it seems like these kids are sure going on a journey. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it wasn't good before the episode either. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I'm excited. Oh, the, the, the just that I, that's one of my favorite songs of the 80s. I love Separate Ways. Oh, I love it. Really? Worlds, Worlds Apart. Yeah, fucking love that shit. Um, oh, fuck. fuck. It's good. Yeah. Fucking. No, I'm just jamming to Journey and Red Guardians all up in that Russian prison. Yeah. Which is apparently where he spends all of his time in movies now. <laughs> <laughs> Russian prisons in <laughs> Siberia. Yeah. 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 I come snow. Chatka. <laughs> yeah. Well. What? Yeah. He's in Kamchatka. They said so in the press release. <laughs> I'm a nerd. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Kevin. But, uh, but Nick, whoever. <laughs> I'm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, listener. Oh God! But it's a uh, goddamn. They're they're going through some stuff in this one. Yeah. Um, are. It. Uh, yeah. It looks good. I'm not. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm excited. I was excited before, but now I'm like more excited. It'll be like, oh, finally. We can- now that we've actually seen some stuff. Right. Um, Instead of just going, oh, is he in Russia? Yeah, and it's going to be released in two parts. Yes, which has been common. But that also means we get more episodes Yeah, for the most part. And mm-hmm. that's, that's nice because a lot of times we'll do like an eight episode and then another eight in a few months because we're getting more Ozark soon. Oh. Right. Uh, Similarly? Cause, similar because they, they just released part one of the last season. Mm. Um, and, and then now part two is coming out pretty right. quick here. They give a date for that? I've missed the date if they did. It's May coming out on <laughs> something. May? May 25th. We, uh, a couple episodes back, we talked about Orville and their new season. And I don't know when that's coming out. Well, I mean, they, they talked about it moving over to Hulu like fucking three years ago. Yeah. It was 2019 Yeah, when that was announced. Yeah. Well, and that's you know, because I was, I was living at, uh, at my buddy Brian's for a, a very brief period of time while I was looking for an apartment. Right. And, and that's the thing. Like, some of these shows, unfortunately, got delayed releases due to COVID. Right. right. Uh, even Picard got a delayed release because of it. Right. So, yeah. so soon. Yeah, soon. Um, this may. I think we t- didn't talk about this yet, but the new did we June second. Thank you. June second is Orville when? for Orville. Orville, okay. right? Perfect. I don't think I have anything planned for the month of June, so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Just on the on the couch, beer open, pants off. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then did we talk about the new Doctor Strange trailer, or did that come out between episodes? I believe we talked about it. Did we? I thought we I, I did. Don't remember? I didn't I write it down. Vaguely Sounds remember good. another the, one cause coming because the, the, the second the the real big one with with Picard um, came out a while ago and it's just yeah. been a couple of TV spots since then which which hasn't given us much which I know you posted one of the TV spots recently but I, I don't really think we got much that's new there no just other a couple than, more other than like a, another good look at a, like America Chavez yeah. Um, yeah and they they announced that she she will be. Uh, openly gay in this one. Awesome. And people are like, I can't believe they're forcing this down our throats. It's like, A, how are you still complaining about this? Like, who gives a shit? The B, uh, it's the what, are they, what, are they, what are they forcing? This, that's how she is in the comic books. Settle down. These are people, the people that don't. These are the, the, the ride-along fans that don't have any knowledge, prior knowledge of anything, uh, and they've just watched the movies, you know? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm reluctant to separate out fans just because it uh, just because I'm worried about gatekeeping. But yes, I agree with you. I'm, I'm, I don't mean it uh, like no, and I know that's not what you mean. I'm not trying to be gatekeepy about it, but like more that it it's about um, the knowledge base. Uh, they can be fans, and I and be fans all you want to, but I think having a broader knowledge of something like for like we've talked about you know i see something like i don't know a lot about these characters so i might go to a mm-hmm. uh, a wikipedia page or a you know like for star wars um you know the the wikipedia you know and, and try to learn more about them or obviously ask you guys because we talk about it all the time and so I'm, maybe i'm just you, they're just following the fandom through the movies, which is fine, but... And that's okay. And you know what? I'm going to hoist myself on my own petard here. Um, that's a good word. Yeah, it is a good word. Um, but, you know, in, in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double back on something I've said already, which is that, yes, in this case, you're going to need to do a little bit more research and look into <laughs> that thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing all the time. And I and, and I don't find it to be gatekeepy 
when it's people who whose comments are trying to gatekeep it. No, itself. yeah, you're you're, you're absolutely they're, they're, right. They're trying to say you know Marvel is changing all these characters to, uh, but they're not yeah. changing anything. You're just wrong. So I find that to so when you say you don't know anything about this, shut up. I think that's a perfectly reasonable time to to be a little gatekeepy. All right. Um, my I, I, I'm just over here on my middle of the road stump, and some, <laughs> sometimes that gets me in trouble. My other thing too is that it's it's people. It's 2022 for fuck's sake. Like, oh yeah, no, I, pe- people be gay. I, people, yeah. people be hella gay. I mean, okay, so if they're gay, if they're bisexual, if they're transgendered, or whatever character they are, like, what does it matter? Would you rather them be like sneak it in there and like not be so obvious about it, and then you bitch about that? I mean, I, like for instance, there's a there's a a, a person I work with that, you know, like I was saying something, oh, I'm going on a date. And they're like, oh, what's his name? I'm like, really? That's your fucking, what's his name? Who the fuck cares? If it, even if it was a him, maybe I was, you know, who the fuck cares? That's such an old cliche. Right. Joke it's just like, I it's 2022. It. Get the fuck over it, man. Like, like write better material at least. Right. <laughs> like if you're going to be, if you're going to be homophobic, fucking write the Oscar worthy homophobe joke. Come on. <laughs> just be better. <laughs> but I'm just, it just, <sighs> Kevin if, is so upset at what I just said. And I'm oh, sorry, no. Kevin. I'm and sorry. I, and I understand that obviously in, in our society, there are people who just will not be no. swayed one way or the other because of their strict Christian values or whatever the fuck they believe in. Or, and that's fine too. But at the same time, it's just like, it, <sighs> We're everybody's a human being. So who the fuck? That what does? How does it yeah. hurt you for if a character is openly gay? How does it hurt you if if that uh, if um, Elliot Page's character in Umbrella Academy is now transgendered? Who the fuck cares? What what does it hurt you? Does it hurt the story? Does it hurt anything that you've seen prior? No. So, by the way, if you've been listening to this podcast for three white guys' opinions about stuff, and we're expecting you know cis-related uh, comments. I have some news for you. And you know, on the some of us are hella gay. On, on the subject of 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 you know Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh Jesus! No. <laughs> Jesus hung out with all dudes and one sex worker. And then when he found out he was being betrayed, he held one big dinner party in order to spill the tea on everything. Are we sure? <laughs> Um, it, it was just theatrical. Just theatrical. You it's know, <laughs> on that note of Christianity, the people that have problems with this probably think that Jesus is white. I mean, probably. Well, yes. I, I mean, because he's white. Duh. Also, the most accurate portrayal of Jesus in uh, in media. I see it a musical, you guys. Yes, I'm bringing it back. I don't oh care. God. I know. I know. I hate Andrew Lloyd Webber, but Jesus Christ Superstar is my favorite. Our Jesus, when I was in that uh, in high school, the guy that played Jesus was blonde hair, blue eyed. It's perfect. Whoa. He, was, he could sing the part, though. He could sing. Oh, that good! I'm part. glad he could sing the part. And he, did you throw at least a brown haired wig on him? No. <sighs> nope. Just left it all blonde hair. No. He's actually a pastor now. Yikes, bikes. <laughs> I mean, which was which was really funny because he was really he, he's a he's a very church going guy and was, has always been and so there was a lot of Bible discussion during this whole. Why thing. do I feel like this is my his... fucking nightmare? Everything you're explaining right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like, want. I would want to be part of none of that. Well, it wasn't like a it wasn't like a, a cast thing. It was just like me and him talking about things. This is when I was deciding that I was like I'm not going to be Catholic anymore. I also or, don't like that musical very much. Yeah. Well. And Rob's referring to a post that I made about Jesus Christ Superstar versus Godspell. Yes, and the answer is Jesus Christ Superstar. Every time. Uh, th- my final Can answer is still Joseph the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I know. <sighs> I hate that one. Uh, it's, my, it's my favorite. <laughs> which was, <laughs> it's, it's, it's what got me into musical theater, I man. Get you, That's fair. I get you. I get it's you. totally fair. Uh, d- um, little, 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 have you heard the revival? Judith. The what? revival uh, Godspell music? No. Okay. Yeah, had a few good songs. Hmm. Except you got to listen to a good version of it. Which it's, there's only one. Steven is... Schwartz, right? Yes. Okay, sure. <laughs> sorry, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Kevin. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Stop it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, lastly, have you guys seen the trailer for... Thor? No, no one has. No, it's still no. not out. No. And we're, like, what, now less than three yeah, months we until are, fucking Thor we, opens? We are renaming Spider-Man trailer watch to Thor watch. And people are like, well, maybe they're just waiting until Doctor Strange because they don't want to cover up the hype of Doctor Strange. I'm like, well, that only puts it... 
a, a month and some change until yeah. the fucking movie comes out. That's unacceptable. It, Not what it's uh, going to go for, but good, good, good. Talk. I know, but I, I, I needed to get that out, and it seemed and like a good space to just fucking. Speaking of that, at the end of Infinity War uh, or Endgame, when when Cap picks up the hammer, how come he doesn't get a new fucking Thor Cap uh, Captain America costume? Uh, because it, it he's just they're separate just than tossing it around. He's not becoming Thor. He's just picking up the hammer. If if you ask me. Kevin and I know nobody does. <laughs> Kevin, 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 what are your at the thoughts end of on Endgame <laughs> when Captain America picks up Molnir? Because Captain America is already Captain America, okay. And I think to become Thor by wielding the hammer, um, it it has to to see that the, the kind of nothingness in you, okay, and and give you that that sort of characterization. Gotcha. Because Captain America is already a symbol. Gotcha. In and of himself, it the power of Thor deemed that not necessary. Gotcha. That that's, makes sense. That's my yeah, no, that's good. explanation. As you're as, no prize. As as I've seen it, right? Uh, because that was definitely something that that has crossed my mind more than right. once or twice. Well, I was rewatching Endgame the other day, so I was just curious. Um, anyways, the the question I was going to ask is: Is you've seen the trailer for a new Nick Cage movie? Called the <laughs> unbearable weight of massive talent. God, yes, yes, I have. And let me read the description of the movie. Oh, if you don't know what yes. it is, and it just it seems to be playing on Nick Cage's ego. I don't know, but uh, anyways, uh, it's a cash strap. Nicholas Cage agrees to make a paid appearance at a billionaire super fan's birthday party, but is really an informant for the CIA since the billionaire fan is a drug kingpin and gets cast in a Tarantino movie. It's and this cast is phenomenal. Star what? struck. It's redonk. Uh, I love when celebrities play fucking super weird versions of themselves. <laughs> right. Uh, like Adam, yeah, but Adam West is the mayor in, in, in Family yeah, Guy. Family uh, Guy sure. One of my favorites is James Vanderbeek in Don't Trust the Bitch in Apartment 23. Yep. He was phenomenal playing like a really <sighs> fucking weird version of himself. Right. <laughs> I love that shit. I will see this movie 50 times. Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I, I was going to say, yeah, um, I, I love things where you see amped up versions of celebrities just doing enhanced versions of themselves. That doesn't look like what's going to happen here, mind you. It just looks like Nick Cage was like, I'm going to go have fun. And I'm for that. Um, this is, this is, I feel this is Nick Cage's version of, um, what was that, John Malkovich? In the Adam, adaptation. Are you thinking of adaptation? I think he's thinking of being John or Malkovich. Being, being John Malkovich, yeah. This is his version of being John Malkovich. Absolutely. That's Except fair. they're not in his brain. I'm okay with that. But I, it, I mean, it looks. I like how. I guess to add to what Kevin was saying. I don't want to go anywhere in, in <laughs> Nick Cage's brain. <laughs> uh, I, <clears throat> sorry, I, I shared a really shitty meme and people are sharing it and that brings me to <laughs> uh, Like a lot. Uh, I feel that Nick Cage has finally just realized that maybe to have a career, he's just going to make these just ridiculous, fun, I don't care what the fucking he's, movie is. He's fucking steering into the skid, and I respect that so yeah, fucking much. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that is a shitty meme, by the way. I know, and I'm so proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I made it earlier today on a whim. I'm like, this is stupid and kind of funny. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, so it looks you're gonna have to cut that out because we're not gonna explain it. <laughs> nope, nope. Uh, so yeah, this movie maybe just, we'll come back to it. So yeah, this movie just looks uh, absolutely amazing. So I'm very excited. Yeah, if you haven't, oh, accused it as the as the the the, the card. What? <laughs> like for the episode? Oh, oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. <laughs> uh. Sure. And the people who saw obviously the image first were like, "Why?" And they'll be, "Oh," <laughs> and it'll be the perfect example. <laughs> so now I have to go back and now I have to re-edit all this so I can get back. I was trying to get back into us. So it'll like, be proving the meme. Yeah, because it'll be Chekhov's gun. Something re- for, that you see referenced at the beginning and then has to show up later. <laughs> yeah, it's very, ah! it's very Tarantino of you. Oh, but now I just explained it. <laughs> no, 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 he can uh, cut that part. <laughs> But technically, they should have already gotten to yeah, the Yeah, they should have Am I cutting all this or am I not cutting all this? I don't Who know. Who fucking knows? <laughs> Man. 
<laughs> All right, I'll get back at this. <laughs> Jesus. Dear listener, if you didn't notice the image of the episode. <laughs> I don't use images anymore. I just use the best response. You should logo. absolutely use the image this time. But I don't because I want people to see the, the t- or it, they might just see the image and not know what it is versus If they're already the subscribed system. to it, it doesn't, it's fine. Right, but if they're new listeners, they need to see the little best response ever thing. I stopped using images a long time ago. I know you did, and it makes me sad because they were always so fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Sometimes nonsense. Maybe I'll make a. Maybe I'll make a special. I'll make a, a make a special exception this time. Yeah. Otherwise, the joke doesn't work. Otherwise, now I now I have to like not cut all this. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, fuck Christ. Yeah. Either you cut I mean, all this, this, you have to or... cut anyway. I feel. Well, this I have to cut. <laughs> so anyway, continue. <laughs> this looks absolutely ridiculous, and I want to fucking in my life right now. And, oh, I, and Cage, I agree yeah. with you. And I agree with you that uh, he, he is staring into the skid, the skid, and it's what else can he do? And he's just like, "All right, let's do it. Let's fucking do it. See what see where it goes." And he will get. Uh, if anything, there will be a. Uh, these will be cult classic movies. Mm-hmm. Similarly, he's also talked about wanting to do Face Off too. <laughs> oh no. Uh, yes, please. No, no. Face off to the facelift. <laughs> this time we go for we go full body. We go facier. <laughs> we go facier. I j- face off to the faciest of the face offs. Oh boy, Nick face off. That said, I wouldn't mind watching uh, an action buddy comedy starring Nick Cage and Brendan Fraser. <laughs> Me either. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you're welcome. I, I, I'm just because my brain went to the place of like who else has been getting a, a nice revival lately? Nick, oh, Nick! Yeah, Nick Cage has got to be Nick Cagey, and Brendan Fraser's got to be a like, sweet goddamn bean. The uh, like uh, his version of him, or his kind of like his character in uh, the Mummy. Yes, nah. a little, a little bit it would of off, that. It would offset the the darkness. Air quotes. Of Nick Cage, <laughs> the the absolute bizarre darkness of Nick Cage. Yes, yes, absolutely. So you need some you need some light, refreshing, a little crispy in there. This that this is my new I idea uh, for. Uh, remember, a couple of years ago there was that uh, there was that talk about uh, uh, the Terry Crews Vin Diesel movie, where they just find out that they're nerds. Nope. We we all also need to add Brendan Fraser and Nick Cage to that cast. Uh, well, I mean, I I. I kind of think that that particular movie should just be like buff dudes finding out each other nudes. So what they, who they need to add to the cast is Henry Cavill Devil. and fucking oh, yeah. um, Joe Magniello. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. In the end of the There's movie, just, just them being ripped playing Dungeons and Dragons. Oh god, shirtless. I love that idea. Shirtless. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Would, I would watch that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to best the reason ever. <laughs> It's like our end music. Weird. Um, anyways, I think it's it for trailers and nerd news. No, no, there was something else. There's definitely something else. There mm-hmm. was, there was something. Yes, else. No, that was it. That's the this end of my list. Simply the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dead air. 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 Squeaky, 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 <laughs> Mike. Maybe that was it. That was it. I swear there was another thing. No, that was it. I promise you. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I said it for the listeners. Because <laughs> they were saying the same thing and they were like, stop. <laughs> Can't get the mic to feedback with your mouth. Sorry. Um. Oh, um, there, uh, Jesus. There was a, a, a video game trailer. Oh, was that, it? Uh, that, that kind of took the world by surprise. Okay. Um, so there was a um, there's a trailer for the new Kingdom Hearts game. Oh, Kingdom Hearts 4? No. Kingdom Hearts 4. So no birth drop memory sleep by chain 369 yeah. over 420 <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. Uh, nice. Just right from 3 to 4. Huh. And... Uh, I could have sworn I saw a title of of the beginning of something saga, the new saga. Well, it's they're 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 changing up the the formula, um, so they show him in the real world. Okay, um, not a Disney world. Mm-hmm. He's in just Tokyo. He okay. looks like a human being now. He doesn't have giant clown feet. 
Um, he just looks like a person. Um, and Sora is it, not a person. It shows him, uh, you know, the this giant, you know, the the heartless gargantuan ones. Yeah, yeah, it's a really big one that uh, that you know hits the middle of the city, and it shows him summoning his keyblade and jumping up street poles in order to go nice. fight the damn thing. And uh, people have said that in the background they saw uh, what appeared to be um, an ATAT foot. <laughs> uh, um. And then it cut to uh, Donald and Goofy uh, being heckled by Hades. You don't <laughs> see Hades, but you know it's Hades. Because even though it was in Japanese, the, the flames kind of gave it away. Right. Um, and he's sort of like a big bad of the series. Right. And uh, it was really interesting and alarming hearing Donald Duck speak Japanese. Because it sounded <laughs> exactly like Donald Duck still. Because he has a very specific voice that people right. can mimic. Goofy speaking in Japanese was also weird because it very much was not Goofy, but just a Japanese guy doing a Goofy impression. <laughs> uh, so that was somehow more and less alarming. It was it was it was weird to watch. It was interesting, and people have opinions about it. But uh, they're Clearly. definitely changing the formula of this uh, of this series, and it looks pretty <laughs> fucking cool. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm watching it on silent right now because <laughs> I Look actually up. hadn't thought you wouldn't be able to understand what they're saying anyway. No, so. exactly. And and I I also saw a trailer, but I didn't see it from you. So again, Oops. trust no, nowhere. So I didn't I didn't believe it was real. And it, so it's, it's now I'm looking Hearts at 4? it. Yeah, this is a real fucking thing. And he, he's real. got real feet. He's got real feet. Is it supposed to be Kyrie? Who is that? No, I, it's, I think it's supposed random. to be the, the Namine, I think. Namine? Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it, they make a point of showing you that those are feet. <laughs> <laughs> like, Look, guys, he looks normal now. Yeah, he's got normal feet. It's from a guy who can't even draw feet. <laughs> uh, nerd grabs? Uh, Robert Leefield? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> nerd grabs. Uh, I got nothing. Nothing? No. Really? I'm sad. No. Well, yeah, because I had my, I got my tax refund, that I paid some bills, and now I don't have a tax refund anymore. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, I have some money left, but it's just saving. Yeah, I don't have anything. Sorry. Nothing cool. Kevin, do you have something? I have a few things. Would you like to share sure. with the rest of the class? Uh, I picked up um, Lego Star Wars, uh, the Skywalker Saga, yeah. and Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Yeah. Uh, both are very fun. Oh, okay. Um, Lego Star Wars, they completely rehauled it. Uh, so it is much more of an open world concept. Yeah. And you can start from either episode one, episode four, or episode seven. Nice. Um, and then all the other worlds are locked. But yep. then you, so we started, because I'm playing with Sabra, we right. started from uh, episode one. We're going nice. through. Um, the space battles are, in particular, very fun. Okay. Um, and yeah, they just uh, they they revamp the whole thing. There's a fucking shitload of characters. Nice. Um, you can even be for the very first time Yaddle. Huh. Really? I haven't unlocked her yet, but you can be Yaddle. Interesting. Um, you can be um, Zori Bliss, which was um, right uh, from episode nine, mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. Uh, Carrie Russell's Power Ranger character. Right. Um, not Power Rangers character. The fucking with a spaceship as a helmet. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I remember playing the Lego Star Wars with my nephew many, many, many years ago because he was still young. Uh, and I just was... <laughs> somehow my ship got stuck somewhere. I don't know. And it was like I couldn't get out. And I was like, what the fuck? This is dumb. I was angry. Very yeah, much so. It's, uh, they've, they've changed everything. There's their voices and, and everything. Great. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And then Let's Tiny Tina's Wonderland is uh, basically a Borderlands Dungeons & Dragons game. Yeah. Um, so it has a lot of fantasy elements to it. Like you get spells, you get yeah. melee weapons, but it's also you get assault rifles and guns that shoot knives and guns that cool. shoot other guns and <laughs> uh, guns that you have to reload with a squirt gun. Um, well, because gun it, it overheats, and so you have a squirt gun to oh, cool it down. Right. <laughs> um, and then the because you're – instead of picking – preset characters like the other Borderlands game, you actually make your own character. Oh. Um, there is no gender assignment. You just pick body type, which is called this one or that one. You can choose <laughs> yes. uh, he, him, she, her, and they, they them, them pronouns. pronouns. You're awesome. going nice. to have cat ears if you're one of those people. Um, <laughs> and all of the voices, all of the 
um, faces. All of the hair options are available for both body types. So if nice, you want to be nice. a big, um, you know, big brutish guy with whose makeup and feminine facial features are, are right. fucking on, on point, point yeah. but then also like a, a Van Dyke yes. uh, mustache and beard, you absolutely can. Sweet. Um, That's what you did, isn't it? No, 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 no. Oh, man. I was um, hoping. Playing as a woman. I'm sorry. Girl? Yeah. Female. <laughs> Um, but then, okay. you're, so you're playing this D and D game with two other uh, characters who are preset, um, who are also in the game, but you don't really see them. But they're voiced by um, Andy Samberg, okay, uh, from <laughs> Lonely Island, Brooklyn Nine Nine, and Wanda Nine-Nine? Sykes, <laughs> nice. from Alabama, Jackson, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Tiny Tina. Uh, yeah, is, Ashley Birch is the is the DM uh, awesome. who is Aloy, and of course Tiny Tina. She's Peach. She's been Peach and Mario for thousands of years now. Yeah, I didn't know that either until recently. Yeah, um, and what's funny is if you excuse me, I'm going to have an annual. If you play a sort of the necromancer character, you get like a little flying skull friend who fights with you and talks shit sometimes, <laughs> who's voiced by Aaron from Game Grumps, which I thought was pretty fucking hilarious. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, yeah, all in all, very enjoyable. So, uh, And then the other thing I got is uh, Saber number 10, because yep. I have a fucking problem. <laughs> uh, hey, at uh, least it's not drugs, I guess. Right? <laughs> this might be more expensive. <laughs> this might be a more expensive habit. Though, though it, I will say it's, it, it's not nearly as frequent, so probably not. But uh, I got the, the newly announced and freshly released... Um, uh, Cal Kestis lightsaber. Ian picked it up for me, uh, but his his space was limited, so he could only get the one. Uh, so actually, a friend of the podcast, Graham, is at Disney World right now, and I have him picking me up another. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this, so here we go. Graham. <laughs> so uh, he is being so kind as to to pick up another for me. He's, like, a, he's like, I'm not sure about the space. I'm like, I will pay for shipping. It's fine. And I'm going to let uh, Saber hold on to that one, and then we can connect him and if you know what I mean. <laughs> I was just going to let it be, but there there it is. There you are. Yep. <sighs> that happened. <laughs> filthy. <laughs> Fucking filthy. Um, I was not thinking something filthy. I was... <laughs> <laughs> I was. Like, I definitely was. They have a wedding. Instead of a unity candle, we connect our lightsabers and turn them on as one. Yeah. <laughs> That's much more wholesome. God, I love it. It's so much more wholesome. And not them. Insert tab A. <laughs> I don't know. It kind of is. I just want whoever officiates the wedding to be like, insert tab A into slot B at this point and twist. Good. And then flip the wait, 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 and if Nick, you both Nick, Nick. don't stand up and say that's what she said, <laughs> I'll be so annoyed. I want to be very clear. If that's going to happen, Nick and I have to go get ordained. I already am. Uh, Rob's going to have to go get ordained to do the ceremony. No, you're ordained. You only need one. Oh, we're going to tag team their ceremony. We've already planned out I your mean, wedding. Honestly, there's, there's, a, there's a good chance of you guys just being in. The wedding party. Yeah. Uh, I, I might have Mike officiate it. No, oh, fair there enough. There, it, it, somebody fucking better say 37 somewhere. <laughs> so I can just go, in a row? Anyways. <laughs> 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 Anyways. So, so you got some lightsabers there. You got some. So yes. So I have Cal Kestis' goddamn lightsaber. It is heavy. Yeah, it is. You could beat someone to death yeah. with this. Yeah. As um, I told uh, Kevin before the episode, it... It feels like it's a 1980s uh, New York City beat cops flashlight. Emphasis on the beat. Yeah, like, no that, shit. Those heavy 3D cell lights. Uh, right, flashlights. right, right. Because it is very much metal. Um, and it's, I would put it at the, uh, around the same weight as Ray's. Um, it, it might be a tiny bit heavier, but hers is very short and stocky, and this one's long and very top heavy. Um, so it's, you know, kind of like us. Get the Ray's light, huh? yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's cool looking. Uh, it's very big, but I mean, I suppose, in, like I was asked Kevin uh, prior to recording, that it's like the guy, the original owner, was a bigger alien type guy, uh, much larger than a normal human. Than 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 Cal was, yeah, yeah, because it was his master's saber, right. uh, and yes, yeah, so it, so it is a, a bit chunky, and it can connect to another one, as I mentioned, and because uh, right. it, it comes with a coupler, if you know what I mean, if you know what I mean. 
Um, the the activation and deactivation are both very aggressively fast. Like the other ones, it's kind of a slower. This one's just like it's on, ah! <laughs> and then just as quick to, it to turn off. It didn't seem to have any yeah. like flash or clash or. Just, it does, yeah. Does it? No, yeah. oh, I'm beating it. Again. it all the Disney ones. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. God damn it! I'm not get a lightsaber. Although I was looking at buy our sabers again, and I was maybe gonna get one, but get see. a NeoPixel. You know you want one. <laughs> I just, yeah, I do. I know, Rob. So, um, further into my um, my total Nintendo weebdom, uh, I bought um, I bought Animal Crossing two years late, which is fine. That's fine. I, I, I don't mind. Got all sorts of new shit that I didn't have when I played it. Yeah. So you're experiencing like a completely different Animal Crossing. Than I, I feel played. like I must be because I know that there's a ton of uh, like it's on version two point zero point five or something. That's the number that pops up on my screen. Um, and uh, because I've, I've got the Nintendo Online subscription, uh, which laughably cheap, um, I also got the DLC for free, mm-hmm. the, the Happy Home Paradise DLC for free. Um, and I've played a little bit of that, and I'm going to keep playing through the main game for a while before I go back to that, because that's just kind of... What's going on with your nipple there, bud? Nothing. I'm just playing this, a little bit. Okay. a cool little badge thing. Oh, sure. Gotcha. Question. Are you do, did you do a full year or are you doing monthly? Uh, for, oh, f- full year. Okay. Full year. Yep. I just, yeah. I'd... Never mind that. Why? Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's super cheap. for. It was $49 for a full year. I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'm doing that. That's totally worth it to me. Because I can play all the Sega games and all the Nintendo, SNES, and N64 games that they have, mm. which the N64 library is slim. <laughs> it's got Majora's Mask. It does have Majora's Mask, um, but it doesn't have Diddy Kong Racing, which upsets me. Yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yet. That's correct. There you go. Yet. This I will cut. Uh, I might be getting a new position at work, which would be Monday through Friday gig, which I'm not like super excited about. But <sighs> does it come with more money? Mm, maybe. Mm. Well, unless it comes with more money. Yeah, it's a training coordinator spot, so I would be in charge of all the training. So I would be happy with that. <laughs> I think it does come with a little more money, but who knows? Cool. Anyway, so not that it really affects our schedule more, but the flexibility of stuff is a little bit easier. Since I won't have to, do I still think we should try and make Doctor Strange work. Yeah, you can try. Like, if I my schedule is different, I absolutely will be able to make it. But if it doesn't change, then I cannot. Yeah, you even told me the date, and I forgot it already. Because like I would be done with work by like three a.m. in the afternoon. I'd be work the, from I'd work from seven a.m. to three p.m. on your new schedule or your current schedule. My new schedule. My okay. current schedule. I work until seven p.m. Okay. Okay. So if you get the new schedule, then you'd be able to go do Doctor Strange. Yes. Kind of sounds like even if you got out at 7, you could still do Doctor Strange if we did like an 8 o'clock. Yeah. I thought you said you wanted to do like the 7 o'clock or 6.30 or something like that. That's what I thought you originally... I was giving like a... Yeah, it's just a, I just said like in, in, place of, time. in place of where we podcast is what I said. Um, I didn't give a specific time. Come on, baby. Well, then well, the other reason I would... Well, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but... Because uh, I have to get up, but ask crack and Don the next day, but it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But yeah, we can work it out. I'll I'll, I'll look up some times. Yeah. What's your Thursday look like? Be the W. Mm, that Thursday of that week, I, yeah. w- I work till seven again. Yeah. Okay. Seven to seven. Okay. Yeah, I work twelve hour shifts. Gross. Okay, back to the show. Back to the show. All right. Anything else for Nerdgrams? Um. No, no I don't think no. so. Oh, oh wait, maybe, maybe. maybe. Think about it for a second. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, after this episode, again, uh, have, join our couple uh, best tri- uh, three, three, three sums. Menage a three. <laughs> menage a three. Our couple's menage three. I was, was going to let them keep going. And <laughs> <laughs> our couple's menage a three. Uh, for Moon Knight, Picard, and Halo. And so if you have seen those and are caught up, uh, let's, you can listen to us and tell us what you think. Or anything else in this episode, good, tell us what you think. Give us, leave us a comment. Um, if not, we will. Uh, this has been Best Reason Ever, episode 150, brought to you by Heroic Goods and Games and Jaybird Wines. I'm Nick. I'm Rob. I'm Kevin. And we will see you either shortly or next time. <laughs> 
this is best threesome ever couples massage where you get two reviews for the price of one baby all right welcome back to our couples menage threesome uh whatever it is <laughs> anyways oh uh, he stumbled through that and it was great i, I loved sure it. did i don't know where we want where do we want to start with uh, why don't we start with Moon Knight? We actually haven't talked about this one yet at all. That's true. Moon Knight. I love it. I love every goddamn second of it. It's, um... Hmm. I like it. I want to be clear. I, I like it, but it is a level of Marvel that we haven't seen yet, and it is creepy. That's why I like it. That's, just, what, I'm, that's what I'm liking yeah, about Yeah, me too. No, me too. And like, it's just, it feels off kill. Because I'm still not entirely certain I know who the main character is. Is it Mark Spector or is it Stephen Grant? So, here's a theory I've seen. And I... <laughs> I think I know this and one, I but, And uh, I think it explains a lot. I think... Um, I think Mark Spector stayed and Steven was snapped. Which is why Mark Spector was around doing stuff for so long without interruption, including getting married and going on all these fun adventures. Oh, hmm. How? Hmm. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. And so he stole his identity? No, 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 no. I think they, they, he still has a split personality, but I think one of them got snapped and one of them didn't. Yeah. So he thinks that, and here's the thing. I think the, uh, how does the personality not, I, I, I'm not saying I, I have the full theory of how this works, but I, I, somebody had like the kind of receipts for it and I was like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. We we yeah. should probably preface this with we don't have nor do we necessarily know anyone with DID. So oh, yeah, by the ignore, way, uh, please excuse our ignorance. Oh yeah, by the way, we're going to spoil the shit out of this show. Oh, we so are going to spoil the shit. Out I of think this. we will know that by now. Um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I I've also seen that um, Mark is the original personality and Steven is the alter. I feel I feel that that's it, and that, and that feels right, and 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 especially seems like he. That Stephen seems to be seems to have taken on a lot of the um, qualities of his wife. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as interests go, and mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. cadences. Yeah, and, and it's like the uh, Stephen as the altar represents sort of the quieter, more <sighs> wants to live a normal life uh, kind of side of Mark. Yeah. Whereas Mark is based in the reality of who he is and what he does for a living. Which is funny because obviously uh, Mark Spector and Steven are the same actor, but the, um, the, the difference. Yeah, but, like, the, but the, um, the God thing is voiced by somebody completely different. F. Voice. Murray Abraham. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just phenomenal. Perfect. Yeah. yeah the vo- That's amazing. The, the voice in his head is F. Murray Abraham. It's fucking Salieri, folks. Yeah. It's goddamn Salieri. Or, if you prefer, the villain from Insurrection. <laughs> yeah. If you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer Salieri. Yeah, Salieri. Forget that. He was in that movie. I mean, didn't he win an Oscar for that movie? Mm-hmm. I don't think it was for that movie. Anyway, so it was an insurrection. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he might have. Best might have. I I don't hate that one as much as other people do. Uh, insurrection? Yeah. No, I actually. But I don't it's think it's not, terrible. But it's also not good. No, no it's no. not good. It's certainly no Star Trek Nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. My favorite part of that whole movie is Elliot Page, actually. In Inc- oh, wait. I'm talking about... Oh, I was thinking about Inception. Sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> the looks they were giving me. So Picard from Nemesis was in that film. Yes, Tom Hardy was. That's right. I forgot. <sighs> Sorry. God damn it, that's Nick funny. Nick not paying attention again. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty amazing, man. Why was I? Anyways. Okay, so F. Murray Abraham. Yep, F. Murray Abraham. <laughs> Moon Knight. Where were we? Uh, it's great. I think it's... It's uh, very good. I'm very excited to see where they're going with fuck this. Fuck it. I need to get, get the suit. Get the suit. Get the suit. 
what the fuck is this? You look like a he, psycho Colonel Sanders. He got a suit, <laughs> and I and it drips. I want. Oh it. yeah. Oh, I would <laughs> love to. <laughs> Funny for I, I. I want that. I need that for a cosplay. Thank you. But I was Mister Knight. I you need Mister Knight. You could pull that. Off. I could pull off Mister Knight. I'd look real good in, in a Mister Knight costume. Like <laughs> just it's a like three this piece dripping wet suit white suit. suit. With a oh my god. Ascot bullshit. You love know, it. Just, like he thought of getting a suit, and that's what he thought of, huh? All right, all right. That's what Stephen. That's what Stephen thought of. Aggressively all right. British, <laughs> uh, gloves on and everything. It was fucking. Oh, it was great. <laughs> I like you. Look like a psycho Colonel Sanders. Uh, that's good. I love it. It's a good looking suit. But yeah, no. It, the fascinating thing. Okay, so here's the thing. And I was really hoping he would be an interesting villain, but so far, the most interesting villain in this show is Khonshu. Or F. Murray Abraham. Ethan yeah. Hawke is just... I, I, I feel like we're still waiting to see... The other shooter drop? Yeah. 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 He's... He's... He's, uh, he's going to be a bit of a slow burn villain. But maybe. I, but I think something cool is going to happen. Maybe. But he does feel very... Uh, I don't know. It, he gives off Joel Osteen vibes. It's fair. Yeah. So, I have a question. I what are you just going to gonna blaze right past that? Okay. No. <laughs> I was just thinking, because uh, I was thinking about the suit and the bad guys and everything. So, uh, how does his wife know he wears a suit, but when you see him, in reality, he's fighting and doing stuff that nobody else can see? He's fighting the dog and nobody else can see it. In the video, he's clearly wearing the suit when he steps out of the bathroom, but on the video, he's just... Spectra, normal, you know. But we don't we don't know if on the video if he hadn't just oh, pulled the true. suit back. We we don't know that. Yeah. All we know is that you couldn't see the sort of Anubis puppy, right? Um, and it wasn't knocking anything over, which was weird to me. So, um, so because of that, we can't say that the suit is invisible. The suit is clearly visible because he was. He was freaking people out while wearing it. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, like yeah, in the, yeah. the, the elevator. Yeah. That's right. Um, but, um, and people saw him like on the bus like, right. and that kind of a thing. So people can see the suit. So she's, she's seen okay. the suit. They just can't see what he's fighting. Correct. Yeah. So mm-hmm. question answered. So is it? Oh, see, no, it's got to be real because it knocked her down too. So never yeah. mind. Never mind. Answer and you my... saw him get like lifted off the ground and yeah, yeah. punched in the balls and whatever. Yeah, and cheated with punching balls. <sighs> it's good. I like it. And of course, it the show always ends, and I'm like, fuck it, come on, you <laughs> every mother, that's yeah, yeah. fuckers. That's that's their bread and butter. <sighs> yeah. So I'm I'm instantly hooked. If a show does that to me, I'm instantly hooked. Like, I mean, it was it's good too, but typically that will. Keep me invested in coming back. So, this is connected to absolutely nothing. But I watched Days of Thunder the other day. <laughs> oh no! Why did you do that? I love it. It All was right. one of my favorite movies as a kid. I, mean, I liked it way better than than Top Gun. I made out with my fair. first girlfriend to that movie. No, <sighs> well, it's the the line that I've always remembered since I was either, Let me out of the car, co. Let me out of the car. So you know. <laughs> so. Well, <laughs> Baby Yondu with hair. Oh yeah, he was so yeah. young. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> Moon Knight. Moon Knight. <laughs> yeah, Moon Knight. Um, I, yeah, I think I think the God damn it, fucking Marvel and their their secret agenda. I know. <sighs> they've, they've gotten quite good at it. Yeah, they sure have. <laughs> Again. Here's a cool Marvel like here's a cool Marvel TV show. Uh, you're not you're definitely not going to think about any of the mental health things you dealt with for the last two years while locked up in your house, worried about a mysterious virus that you can't really see, and it makes you feel a little crazy that other people just aren't believing it. Yeah, yeah. Now I think you're reading too far into it. I I mean. I definitely exaggerated for the joke, but also, no, I'm not. <laughs> Vintage Rob. 
Yeah, it's just, yeah like I didn't. No, I didn't, don't make me think about my fucking mental health. I'm here to escape. God damn it, Marvel. Fuck. Yeah, I, uh, when I get home, I'm gonna watch. Uh, well, I'll go to Saber's place after, but we're gonna watch the the episode as soon as I get there. Mm. Yeah, I gotta watch mm-hmm. it. What do you think about Kevin? How, how any, any thoughts on Moon Knight? Good. Bad. I've said my thoughts on Moon Knight. I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's still the, it's still early days. Like uh, the setup's been really good. Right. Yeah. Uh, how about that John Luck Pickard? <laughs> uh, I thought we'd save this for last. Go Halo, and then all right, and then do Pickard. Uh, Halo, not what I was expecting. No, the the first episode was lots of shooty shooty bang bang, and ever since then it's just been walking around space stations. Yep. Uh, and then some stuff finally happened at the end of the last episode. Yeah. Um, but it's been it's been a lot of it's like a more interesting expanse so far. Right, and they definitely took their own liberties with the whole. And I'm okay with that. I am too. And, and and I think we've talked about this. The you know the the books have a lot of lore to them, but they're also Halo books, and that's that's a lot of effort. And I that I'm not willing to put into a video <laughs> game. Series. And I and much like me because I started watching, I go wait a second, why. I'm like I don't remember Master Chief being like a bad like bad not a bad person but like the like the going against the thing going against his whatever I don't remember that ever in the video game they they definitely introduced an, a new um, so I had to go read about it yeah they definitely had to introduce a new kind of thing with the whole Marines and like the this human rebellion and that kind of a thing right and so that that's definitely something new to the show. Um, Right, and then uh, there's an after show that was... I watched the first one, I haven't watched it since, but it kind of explained all the background, which was nice, because then I was kind of like, oh, okay, I haven't caught up, but I, they're like, we're definitely taking some uh, some advantage, you know, some... Some liberties. Liberties with the characters and stuff, and well, I like it. Um, uh, but I do also like how they kept in that... You know, it, he's just uh, literally... They're, the Spartans are literally just puppets for the military and they i mean that is 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 still that is actually pretty accurate to the game and the and the lore of the books yeah okay like the whole taken from their you know as children to become genetic genetically engineered weapons and right. sort of puppets of of the man that is actually is it? halo it's okay. just this whole you know people you know humans are terrified of them because they're basically you know this giant armored boogeyman right um, that's you know how the how the aliens feel about them, and if I don't see a fucking grunt soon, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> it's only been the elites. I want a little short, little chubby, little <laughs> grunt. I want the little guys with the little stupid cone things on their head. That's what I want. I want I want to see one fall over. I'm gonna laugh, and then Master Chief's gonna shoot in the face. And I'm gonna laugh again. <laughs> maybe the next episode. Maybe the next episode. I mean, you got Tilly back, so maybe you can get a little grunt going. I want to make. I want to hear. They probably won't, uh, but I want to hear some reference to red versus blue. They probably won't. They but. won't, but they should. They yeah, they should. absolutely should. Is that, is that is that uniform light red? No, it's pink. So I want a light blue one. His name's Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> the best yes. one. Although I just it's realized scary. when I was watching this, I was like, and I knew this already, but uh, in light red versus blue. The one guy is Sarge. I'm like, wait, that can't be the Navy if the guy's name is Sarge. That doesn't make any sense. It's, Navy doesn't have Sergeant as a rank. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Kevin, don't give me that look. Well, they are Marines. <laughs> they are Marines, but they use naval rank. Well, it's also the future. So they they could have or merged maybe, the... Maybe they're like the Navy SEALs, so therefore they're using the Navy rank, but the Marines are fucking... Or maybe his name is just Sarge. Maybe his name is just Sarge. I thought it was due to his rank, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> yes, I overthink these things. Shut up. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I, Like I said, I know very little about Halo, and I only played it in the versus mode, so I don't never really actually played the game. Well, the then, you, then you don't really need to, since it's a completely different story anyway. So. Well, exactly. That, but I did want to know. Like, I'm like, It's eh. very jarring that Cortana is the body of... Um, why am I blanking on her name? The doctor. Yeah, she's from the damn game. Why am I blanking on her name? Um, but anyway, it's very jarring that it's her that it's her body and face and everything. But it's still the original like video game Cortana's voice. 
<laughs> it's very weird to me. Is Cortana is quirky, not quirky, but kind of interrupty, kind of like oh, yeah. the little sister? Okay. <laughs> it's like every time they're like, they were having beef, I was like, shut up. She is your best friend. <laughs> Until, you know, Halo 5, where she's not. She's kind of the spy, too. I mean, spying on him. Mm-hmm. Being a little. Being a little backstabber. It's okay, though. I'm sure they're, they'll become best, besties soon. Do a little hearty thing with their hands. Anyways, anything else about Halo? A little hearty thing with their hands. Um, cute. I, I like that they're they're also kind of featuring the other Spartans. Yeah. Um, they're very cool. I wish there were more of them. Me I understand. too. Because they, they said like only 30-some had survived, and obviously one of them left and now runs his cool uh, underground planet that's not really underground, but it's kind of underground anyways. Uh, and uh, an oh, asteroid. where'd all the rest of them go? You know, it's dead. Also, in the one in the most recent one, that not the one that we haven't seen yet, but the last episode, when she comes out and the snakes start attacking, why are they shooting the snakes and not her? Nobody shoots her, not a one. Confusion, plot, plot. <laughs> she has to remain in the show. I get that, but <laughs> dumb. <laughs> Anyways, that's my thing. I'm glad that we just finally got an explanation about her. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if the boy that she's with is ends up being John. He died. Did he die? Yeah. I thought he just run it off. No, she run it off. He he got got. Oh. Hmm. I missed that part. I was like, is that John? At least I thought he. I don't sure. think he died. Are you sure he died? Oh, maybe he did. I'm like 83% sure he died. It's a matter of perception of how you snap. <laughs> Show me the body. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nobody knew death. That's right. So that's Halo. Um, should we now get to the Pickard? Yeah, John Luck Pickard. John Luck Pickard. Fucking. God damn, this, this show is fucking. It's, it's it just, going to 11. It doesn't fucking stop. Does not. Uh, I love that they gave uh, uh, they gave Allison Pill a little a little song moment. I, I enjoyed the performance. Uh, Phenomenal. Her dress was also pretty cool. <laughs> 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 uh, I I love the 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 kind of bromance she has with the board queen. I'm shipping them as of as of current. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! I love it. I love yeah. them. It could go they got kind of wrong. they got kind of this buddy cop comedy thing going on. They do, but also and yipes. Tell the board queen shut her out. Well, yeah, uh, oh. that's that's I. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, they are just nope. They 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 have not. It was a filler episode too. That's the I, thing. I know. It was a fucking filler. I mean, it was a talky talky episode, and there was nothing big that happened in the fucking episode. There, there and is, it's still amazing. There's a drastic difference between Next Generation filler and Picard filler. Yeah, or even the last season of Discovery filler and this filler. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the, okay. The first two and last two episodes of Discovery sure were good last season, and the rest weren't. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fucking so good. Yes, he's gonna fuck that girl. Yeah, he's yeah. he's gonna. You can't you he, can't bang the past lady. You might be related to her. Well, he yeah. will be because he's gonna make a baby, and then they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they it's gonna, gonna Kate, be Kate and Leopold it. Where like she's grandfather her own paradox. Ugh. Yeah. Yep. That's not a, wasn't that. Uh, Oh no, he didn't have. Yeah, that was that happened in Futurama too, didn't it? It also happened in Deep Space Nine with Fry. Like this, this particular trope has been observed already in Star Trek. <sighs> also, a really good show called Dark. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, don't don't fuck the past, Lady Rios. He will. Incidentally, I have uh, well, he, goddamn Aramis. Maybe he won't. Maybe he I was won't. Just gonna say. <laughs> maybe he won't fuck her, but he did have a cigar. <laughs> that <Yikes>. old chestnut. <laughs> while we're uh, while we're on the topic of hot off the presses, topical humor. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, Iran Contra, anyone? <laughs> Iran Contra. I didn't go that far back. <laughs> God, it wasn't all that Mortal Kombat sure is ruining the kids. <laughs> <laughs> That, uh, <laughs> There's this new thing <laughs> called twisted, the interweb. <laughs> a twisted sister. I gotta go talk to Congress about them. 
<laughs> I saw that come up again recently, which is great. Yeah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Al Gore's wife uh, was on the tirade about Tipper. Tipper. Tipper Gore. Tipper Gore. Yeah, she was on this tirade to Congress about music and how it was influencing poorly on the youth of America. And Dee Snyder went and gave a a surprisingly amazing uh, speech about the Intelligent, thought-out, insightful, introspective speech in front of Congress dressed in fucking... Sunglasses, a ripped uh, T-shirt with no <laughs> sleeves, ripped jeans, his hair fucking a everywhere. Beautiful mane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like just a whole. Yeah, if you've not seen this clip, you should watch it because it is a masterclass in how you say "fuck you," the man politely. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, D. Snyder's got a very high IQ, and I believe he's got a doctorate in something, but I could be wrong. But I he's, mean. I believe he, he, he's an incredibly smart and intelligent. He, he very much is. And that was kind of the funny thing where they probably expect. And I think that's what they expected for him when yeah. he came in with that look. And they're like, oh, this is going to be fun. Let's see what this dumbass yeah, has got to they, say. They, they specifically picked him because they expected him to be a clown and yeah. make a fool of himself in yeah. front of Congress. And he did. And he wiped the floor with them. It's ama- It's an amazing... You, it, if you've never seen this, you should watch it at least once it, in your life. It's, it's, a bit, it. it's a bit of... I mean, it is history of how the parental advisory sticker came about and explicit content and blah, 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 blah. I mean, there's a whole lot of uh, degrees and, and nuance to that story. Because there is. It, it's but not that, about that, D. Snyder's music. They no. just wanted a white face to pin it on so that they could... They, Al Gore very much went after all of rock and roll, but specifically like with the Twisted Sister because it was the video uh, that she spoke of in her address to Congress. She spoke about the Twisted Sister video where she he was all dressed up in makeup and... What image are we sending to our kids? And the um, so the yes, that's true. They were coached and or and it was orchestrated that they would go after hair metal, right? Because the actual target would have looked really, really bad. What would that be, Rob? It would be hip hop and rap and no. g- gangster rap, uh, specifically NWA at the time. What? Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. They they did. That's. Uh, yeah, no, the the PMRC was a, a horribly racist okay. organization. They are. Um, we got to get back to Picard. Yeah, sorry. And anyways. Um, Did you do something? <laughs> Why? Uh, somebody posted a, a cutout of Chekhov in... Uh, like in the the comments saying here enjoy, uh, <laughs> nice. and and people have been putting out some bangers of him <laughs> photoshopped into other shit. <laughs> awesome! Oh, look at that! It came back. <laughs> hey, hey, Picard. So Picard. So Picard. And it was on topic. <laughs> um. So yeah, no, Picard is killing it. Speaking of killing it, though, like I feel like putting Jean Luc in mortal danger is kind of jumping the shark a little just because they killed him the first season uh i i don't because that's you know how you create basically something interesting to keep you watching like you know he's he's, no, I remember he's sort course. of the old vulnerable man now and so yeah. it, it's easy to put him in danger but uh something that occurred to me that uh if you're if you don't watch subtitles watch with subtitles you might have missed it but at one point, um, oh, the, right. the watcher, uh, who is not, but also maybe is Laris, uh, speaks Romulan. Yes, that's she, right. She curses something in Romulan. Yeah. And, and something you may not have caught. You thought she maybe was just speaking another language or just uh, mumbling something that you couldn't quite catch. But if you have the, the subtitles on. It says she speaks Romulan. Yes. <laughs> Romulan. Yeah. So that is an interesting piece of yes, the puzzle. Now I totally remember what my question for you guys, the what if question thing Fire. was. No, I, thought I'll, I think I'll save it for next time. Okay. Uh, I will mention write that. Write it down. Yeah, write it down, please. Um, but I will mention that uh, I'm glad they are not ignoring the fact that Picard is an android. Quite. I mean, not quite. They're not, they're not, not ignoring it. What? And that was something I, I wasn't sure about with the, the wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff, but what actually still kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, 
that because even in the well, even in the, uh, the fascist timeline, he would have still had that disease. Yeah, he would have still had that disease, and he absolutely like with no remorse would have jumped into a new body. And in fact, is probably making even more new he bodies. For, he might be on his like fourth or fifth by the Clone point. Wars backup. Yeah, so several of them. Yeah, because I couldn't remember they they he's did, Palpatine in his way through the fascist. They timeline. did they did put him into an android body. Picard. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they don't ignore that, and I appreciate. Yeah, but in disco- in in uh, what show was it where they said they tried it with the Picard thing? Oh yeah, in the the Discovery when they were in, in the way way future, they talked about trying it with Picard and it didn't work. About putting the the cognizance into an android body. They specifically said they tried it on Picard and it didn't work. They something about I don't remember the exact wording, but it was like they were talking about that whole concept, and they're like, "We tried this, you know." Remember they tried it with uh, the with, with Picard and it didn't work. It didn't take. There was they, it, there was a failed experiment. They didn't say. I know for a fact they didn't say they tried it with Picard and it didn't work. They they would not have said it like that because they did try it on Picard and it did work. Well, they mentioned that in they they might have said like Picard or something like that, maybe, but I, you know. I don't believe they said we tried on Picard and it didn't work. No, they didn't say we, but they meant they mentioned Picard and it. Okay, so w- what I think is is the issue is that they probably didn't have a soon. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, I had something and it's gone now. <laughs> okay, I wrote it down. Um, I remembered. Uh, Wally, it was Wally. <laughs> it was Wally. It was Wally. Did you write um, it down? Issa, Issa Briones is back. Yes. Yeah. She's been back for two episodes, but from our last episode, yes. she hadn't come back yet. She is back. Yeah, I'm very excited, and, and she looks great. And we're not 100 percent sure what she is now. No, is uh, she a clone? A clone. Yeah. She's got to be a clone. Got to be a clone. Yeah, that was in the last episode. Well, but like they don't spell it out. They're all the different specific. names of other people, and she's like, Dad, what did you do? Oh, yeah. No, she's definitely a clone. It's definitely. Just, but clone. Ag- again, they haven't said it out loud, but she a clone. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which is funny. And I, I, he does such a good job at it, but I don't like seeing Brent Spiner be a total dickbag. It makes me sad because, like, it it, at least in the, the Star Trek thing because we don't have like a good guy version of him fighting a bad guy version of him we only have a bad guy version of him who hit picard with a car who hit picard <laughs> yeah out to sea that is my answer sir okay <laughs> have you ever seen it <sighs> no okay it's um jack lemon Walter Matthau, they go on a cruise ship. Uh, they're working a cruise ship, but like one of them tricks the other into going, it's a cruise ship, all expense paid. What's the catch? Well, they have to work the cruise ship, and it's a bunch of old people. And the lounge singer slash like manager slash antagonist of the film is Prince Spiner. Yeah. He's just an absolute dickbag, and I love it. I but love like I said, in, that, it, yeah. in in the realm of Star Trek, in the realm of Star Trek, it's weird. But like, I already had that um, template of Brent Spiner to go on, so maybe it was easier for me. Night Court, Night Court, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he totally was on Night Court. He was, but he also wasn't a villain in that either. He's no, he was kind the kind of a bumbling <laughs> idiot. He was a reoccurring. Uh, f- Bumbling, mid- like just a reoccurring defendant. Yeah, him and his wife, and those crazy things they were doing. They were like, from like the Midwest and moved to New York. Yeah, and- like just kind of trailer trash, sort of a. <laughs> yeah, well, we he, very, very, very southern accent. Uh, and I didn't it, for a long time. I didn't realize it was him until I was like, oh, it's Prince Manny. It's, yeah. I, I think that's how he got the part of Data. Well, yeah, uh, and that's like so. that. Yeah, because that was his breakout thing was Night Court. Uh. Yeah. That's where people saw him first. It had a great theme song. Do, 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 do. Yeah, the bass. Do, 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 Some slap bass in the beginning. Um, it's a great theme song. Anyways, da, da, da. <laughs> I'm really digging Picard. Da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm curious to see what happens to because it's only six episodes, right? 
No. Seven, I think. Well, we either not, way, not enough is the answer. Yeah. Right. There, there's definitely only six episodes of Moon Knigget. You're right. So they're episode three, four now. Yeah. Um, I'm interesting to see. I, again, it's just like, how is this all going to work out? And so, of course, it's got the show's got me when I start thinking about that because now you have the doctor and the Borg, the Borg doctor uh, walking around. Uh, Ten. It's, this one's got a full ten. Oh, sweet. <gasps> Does oh, it really? Oh, Thank my God. God. I thought they were going to have to fucking rush the ending and have poor writing. I was going to say, because, because today, um, not today, tomorrow would be episode seven. Oh, my God. We're already six episodes. Yeah, two of them was Jesus. episode six. Oh. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know. It, it's a blur because this it's, thing is it's, just... It's just it's, pounding away, man. It's just... Going hard. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I didn't know how to get out of it. Pound. Um, I don't care about Renee. I want to. I really do. But I don't Same. care. Same. Right? She's... And I, I think it's because if she had been just not so blasé and blonde. Yeah. Like if there's something a little more... Uh. There's also that, that that weird millennial thing uh, about it where she's like, I have crippling depression. I'm like, so do the rest of us. I know. Shut the fuck up. It's like, well, I'm the <laughs> club lady. Go to fucking space, yeah. you idiot. <laughs> yeah. Like, rude, yes, but also, uh, yeah. It's it, it. I don't know what it is, but like, yeah, I just, I'm not connecting with her. Um, also, I think my mic is doing something weird right now, man, and it has been it does for a seem like it's doing because weird. you're you've been peaking all night long. Okay, all night long, all, all night. Uh, so I've been watching the original series. Oh, okay. Uh, recently, I'm, I'm I've been doing a run through of that, and uh, I just got to the Zephyr Cochran episode. Oh, sure. Which is a a weird fucking episode. Mm-hmm. Um, B, uh, there was a. Like a position at the Federation that they don't talk about a lot in Star Trek. Um, uh, what's that? Which was a, a, the commissioner of Starfleet. Yeah. And this mm. is the assistant commissioner. And I was impressed that it was a woman. Um, because, you know, the 60s Star the 60s, Trek. The 60s, yeah. <laughs> Woof. Um, <laughs> but it was it was Ephraim Cochran, and he was, you know, playing himself still at 35-ish. Though he was... Um, 200 and some odd years old. Sure. Um, but the planet he was on, this entity, younged him back down to, to 35. And he said he, he he was basically retiring to space at 87, um, went to see the stars, and, you know, got pulled there. Um, but it's interesting because the young Zephyr Cochran is the same age um, in, in this episode, is the same age as the Star Trek first, Cochran, first contact Zephyr Cochran. Right. Uh, who is supposed to be in his mid thirties, <laughs> but yeah. obviously did a little bit harder living. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. And that's that's something like, despite the fact that First Contact is regarded as the best of the next generation films. Yes, that I I love that man. He's an amazing actor, James Cromwell. Yes, yeah. That that was a choice they made, and is an annoying one. Sure. Mm. Um. And I'm looking at a picture of the original Zephyr Cochran as played by Glenn Corbett. Yep. And, uh, yeah, you're right. That's, uh, that's some weird shit. Handsome fella. Oh, yeah. Um, see if you can understand the sentence. This is going back. I was trying to find the line that they mentioned about John Luke is when they're putting, trying to put Tal's body into a transfer the consciousness into a bean. Sure. Uh, as explained in Discovery's second episode of season four, the same technology that gave John Luke his synthetic body was actually a failure, with the Enterprise's most famous captain being one of the only successful host bodies created by the technology. Doesn't that contradict itself? Yeah, I don't... It does. I, I think that's, that's a bad sentence. It's a horrible, f- horrible sentence. Anyways, sorry, I was, it, I was, I, I think it's referring to the that future instance being the failure. Oh, uh, but they made the body successful. Yes, but 
Jean Luc's was the only successful one. Uh, but that doing the tall thing was the was the failure. I think grammatically that's what it's trying to say. Gotcha. Uh, I don't know. The, it says in the in the next sentence is that uh, that is until Discovery decided to use it yeah. to bring back uh, Gray Tall, who yeah. was who was killed off, and who the had third then season. worked. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Read that sentence to me again. Uh, ah. As explained in Discovery's second episode of season four, the same technology that gave John Luke his synthetic body was actually a failure, with the Enterprise's most famous captain being one of the only successful host bodies created by the technology. It throws a lot of unnecessary it, words in there. It does, and it must be re- being referring to the fact that they they had tried it again, or they had tried it before, or in... In general, it was a failure because they they must have tried it again. Right. I I don't know. I okay. I can't tell you that. But Anyways. yes, Jean Luc is an android. Okay. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Which was funny when they were like, hey, "What what part of him is needs? It, will, it was replaced. Uh, all of him." <laughs> and it seems like they all know that he's an android. Does John Luc Picard know he's an android? Yes. No. They explained it to him. They even said you'll. You know, you're not you're not infinite. You're you're not going to be like data where you don't age. You will you will live a little while longer, and you will uh, die peacefully. That's right. I and remember that. That's the end of this. Your shit will deactivate. So, see this whole COVID thing that threw me off for a whole year. It's like we all lost a year. Uh, which, of course, I could have just gone back and watched the first season. Uh, so, yeah, I remember at the end when they're like. You're gonna still radiation. Age. You're still gonna age, but you'll just live a little bit longer than you normally would. Or we could have you live forever, but we don't. And John Luke was like, "No, I don't want to." That's, it, no, it's all coming back to me. It's all coming back to me, folks. All coming back to me now. Sorry, right? In my face. Actually, John Luke was like, "So do I get to? Do I get to?" He's like, I, he, he actually I sounded interested in, in the in the idea of living a little longer, and they're like, "Well, you'll live." A little longer than the average human, but what, what you were supposed, supposedly supposed to live past, yeah, yeah, basically. And then you'll, queens, you'll who, die when you're supposed to. And queens who wants to live forever will play in the background. <laughs> anybody know what movie that song was written for? Anybody? 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 Lee would know this one. It's Highlander. It's Highlander. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's why I gave him eyes. Yeah. It was not, not a difficult question. Kind <laughs> of was. Okay. Now, to be fair, I like giving Kevin eyes. So, yeah. All right, anyways, anything more about Picard? Sorry, we're dragging on. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, not really. Like, uh, It's great. It's good. Yeah, okay, it's wonderful. so, but wasn't Seven acting weird before, and now I feel like that storyline's just been dropped? That she was acting weird before? Yeah. Like, she was, she was acting weird because she hasn't been human forever and a half. All is that it? Or all she's it? ever known is her borgness. Are we talking about before the time shift? No, no, no uh, like after the time shift, obviously. Like when they're in 2024 Los Angeles and like, again, Raffi points it out even. It's like, what? why are you being so weird about this? And now in, in, in Seven's defense, Raffi is fucked up over... Uh, over uh, Elnor. Elnor, thank you. I wanted to say Elrond, and I knew that was wrong. <laughs> uh, Elnor's death, and so like maybe Raffi's just projecting. But I will admit, like there are some w- things. Like there's there there's a personality shift that happened with Seven between even season one and and now season two. So like I don't know what's going on. But. I don't know. I haven't noticed it. <clears throat> I haven't noticed it. I think she's trying to trying to keep her shit and Raffi shit all together at the same time and and I I don't think she's I don't think she's acted any weirder than Seven normally does or at least since going back in time she's acted at a at a pretty um nice <laughs> Jesus nice uh at a pretty steady level of weird Fair as enough. far as like trying to yeah to to acclimate to the past goes sure right. and I guess I guess it felt like that they were trying to sort of hint at something and then nothing's come of it yet so the only weirdness I've noticed is how distant Rafi and Seven have been right. to yeah. each other yeah um, which so is too bad Picard's a 
Android now. He doesn't have the Borg parts in him anymore, so he can't feel like he used to with the Borgy connection. Which they conveniently forgot in an episode. The whole justification as to why Agnes had to hook up to the Borg Queen versus Picard, because he's like, I've been assimilated before. She would take me like that. And he's an android. He would I, honestly, I, I, I think they were just cutting out all the preamble. I think if he had tried, it wouldn't have worked. Right, maybe she needs a she needs to assimilate a and I, living honest, creature. I, I just don't think he thought about it. Mm. And also, um, you know, being an android, he wouldn't have any of that in him anyway. That's true. She she, um, she couldn't take data, but his but his psyche is still the same, and I yeah. and I think that yeah makes him vulnerable. Okay, right. And I I think part of it too is that I think the Borg need a living creature to host into. They can't just go because I mean, techn- I mean, yes, he's living, but he's an android, so that's how I took it. Right? Maybe I don't know. Because I mean, even when they were when they assimilated data, they assimilated data not by adding Borg technology, but by making him flesh and yeah, by seducing him with the flesh. <laughs> Actually, yes, yes, and yes. Did the Borg Queen and him do it with that? Yes, with that. They absolutely. They she seduced him with that Borsi. Yeah, <laughs> she got that. <laughs> you are welcome, Earth. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this shit up. I got stuff to do. Yeah, no shit. We've we've drank. <laughs> All right. All right. So all these shows, watch them. They're pretty good. All these shows, <laughs> watch them. <laughs> That's a good wrap. It's up. been best threesome ever. I'm Nick. Wait, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm Rob. I'm Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> and we will see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> The views held here by the nerds of Best Threesome Ever do not directly reflect the views of nerds everywhere.